you got? <laughs> Look at that sweater. <laughs> hey, rightfully it's so. Not lit. Rightfully so, brother. Not lit. Rightfully so. Hey, it ain't no. I, I respect it. He got the under ice the sweater on for y'all boys early. I'm starting with the Browns. Right, rightfully so. Y'all crazy. Y'all heard it, man. Hey, talk your, hey, talk your wifey talk, won't Leroy. Let him light, let, it, wifey won't let him light that in the house. Not in the house. Hey, you know what I, you know what I sent out. I, I sent a message to my boys. And to my Buckeye friends, and it was a gift of Debo <laughs> driving by the house on Friday. <laughs> what you got for me, Craig? Yeah, you know, guess got, what? You know I got my. Look, guess I got what? Tucked in. Yeah, that was good. Hey, hey, I'm gonna tell you like this. Y'all got y'all lunch money took. Mm. Yeah, we did. And 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 what make it even worse is I can understand if a team come out in the first half and and, and and apply that pressure and then you respond. But the game was pretty much tied at halftime. Mm -hmm. And they came out in the second half and no, put it no, on. No, 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 no. Yeah, y'all came out in the second. We yeah. we never we never left the locker room. Yeah. But 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 it it, it goes to show you. And I said this all last week, and I was going back and forth during text when the score was 23 to 31. This game ain't over. I've been a part of it. I Listen, to Leroy. Where J I've John Colasar had to score. Huh? I, 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 I'm going to read the text chain from you. It's one of the funniest things. I was reading it to the group because, you know, we were together at my house watching the game. And literally, Leroy sends a text. I'll give you the times on it. He sends a text at 3.32. This isn't close to being over. <laughs> I've played in this game. It's not even close. At 3.34, night, night. <laughs> Two minutes. Two minutes. I lied. I lied. Hey, night, night. Hey, I. Yeah, but but here's the deal. How many people made the assumption that Michigan didn't have a chance when Quorum didn't play? I a did. A lot. I made that assumption. Right. Yeah. And and I told you what my what my <laughs> deal was is that. In the last, in the previous four or five weeks, J.J. McCarthy did not show me, or anybody for that matter, that if the ball was in his hands, he could make plays. No. And he made some plays. Uh, this is uh, Leroy. Like, Leroy. Now he's in the transfer oh, portal. Leroy, let me. Who, who is, is Cade? J.J. McCarthy. No, that's Cade. No, I thought it was. Oh, wasn't no, it? Cade. McCarthy's not in the ball. It's Cade McNamara. Oh, okay. so Cade McNamara. Let, my Leroy, bad. My bad. Leroy, let, let's come on down. Now that we we we're talking on <laughs> it, this might subject. be a max school. Yeah. To be honest with you, come on down there. Yeah, y'all won the game, but the game was given away to y'all. I'm gonna be honest with you. How? Because wait it's, a minute. It's five. Hey. He's plea bar. He, he he's trying to back paddle Leroy. What he, what is this? The I game hear? was given away. Be, I'm Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold he said, on. He's a hold on. You ain't, hey, hold on. Hey, hey, Todd. We didn't come and ask you for your lunch money and you gave it to us. We took it. We took it. Rightfully so. We took your lunch Rightfully money. So. He's right. He's right. They listen, took it. listen. And, and left you with the celery. Leroy. <laughs> Leroy. No peanut butter. Listen. Just, no, 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 don't talk about giving nothing away. Can I? When can the guy I, run for 200 yards in the second half, you ain't give nothing away. Can I? Can I, Let me know when no. I can, Let me know when I can go. No. <laughs> This is like Michigan, Ohio State all it's, over again. Hey, instead of hearing this, I'd rather see G. Bush cut up his steak into little baby pieces. <laughs> <laughs> all right, give hey, us a play-by-play play hey, of that. Hey, can Break I just tell down. you this? Here's what made it hilarious. <laughs> is that, you know, G. Bush always <clears throat> want to break things down. Right? <laughs> so we ordering food. <laughs> me and, 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 and Bull tried to give a new classification to me, <laughs> which nobody knew what the hell he was talking no, about. No, it's not a new classification. Hey, no, it was. Tell him what around, you kept you asking the guy. It, Leroy. 
Tell everybody what you was asking the damn way. There is a new, I couldn't remember what it's called, but if you go to a steakhouse, <laughs> right, true. there is a new classification of meat between between rare and medium rare. In between, it's called like... Medium rare plus. Medium rare plus. Medium that's plus. it. I yeah, that's how it. I order my steak. Leroy's saying you're making it up. I'm no, like, that's I'm not, not made it up. up. That's not made up, Leroy. I could, just couldn't think of what it was called. I'll tell you this, though. Anyway. When, I, when I order it, I'm looked at like I'm the biggest yeah. douche of all time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's wait, what Leroy wait. looked at me. <laughs> hey, hey. Imagine if you don't even know what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, now, if I didn't know what it was called, what I wouldn't called? try to, I wouldn't try I to go there. I gave up and just so, went with medium rare. <laughs> so wait. And it was so, perfect. The steak was perfect. Yeah. So, so, so we order our food. Yeah. And we get it. <laughs> and then, and G. Bush start breaking down the proper steak etiquette at a steakhouse. He's like, look. If you want to know if a steakhouse is good, I'm going to break it down for you. You don't put nothing on the steak. <laughs> That's a fact. That is That's true. true. That nothing. is a fact. That is true. No ketchup. No, one one no bite A1. with nothing. Yes. Fact. No, no but, 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 sauce. No peppercorn. That's, that is a Did fact. you say ketchup, G. Bush? I say people I know. are if you, doing so that. If you break you out Heinz 57 at a steakhouse, That's I'm kicking you out. I'm not eating at that table. I can't see good meat wasted with ketchup. Patty Mahomes do it. But no taste of food. Listen. There's only one thing that would get me to add something to my steak. Crab. That's what I got. If you tell me you got some kind of crab sauce to put on it, I'm all in. Okay. Lobster on top. See, I Surf and turf. I, see, Surf and to, turf. My, right. to, to my to my defense, though, Leroy. See, you got to think about it. I got a I got a. Uh, well, he uh, didn't even get to the. the I'm about part to say about well, I was right. cutting. I was cutting it up, and the reason I cut my joints up. See, I had neck surgery. And I woke up from neck surgery and I can't be swallowing that hard, right? Pulse. And I and Lee, I said this yeah, at the table. Still just I said, piece of I said, time. man, it's hard to swallow my meat. Pause. <laughs> Pause. Pause. Oh my goodness. Lee was like, what? Pause. It's hard to swallow my meat. Whoa. G Bush. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I felt like I was gonna have to baby bird him and chew it up and spit it in his mouth or something. Pause again. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Pause again. The reason that that is like that. Uh, a faux pas is <laughs> because <laughs> the, when the steak is intact, the, yeah. the heat stays That's in right. the meat. When you cut it and expose all those edges to the air, it's going to cool down faster than you can eat it. See, that's the thing. I was the last one. So now, before Leroy, he ate any piece, he cut all of it up. Everything. I, I, no, I oh. a couple of <laughs> no, So here's what I do. Yeah. If it's a ribeye, I take the fatty pieces, right? But, okay, you take it all? No, I eat those. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Those are the best hey. parts. Ah. I, hey, oh, John. Not, listen, I'm a John. filet guy. No Hold fat. I am too. No, I want fat. no fat. Lean John. and mean, baby. <laughs> Ty, here's what Filet I want you to do. Is the most blocked Ty. steak. That's why you guys are too skinny. Filet. Ty. Wow. Go Ty, ahead, here, Leroy. Ty, Go ahead. here's what I want you to do. I want you to just look over to the left like this. <laughs> and then ask yourself, is he eating the fat? <laughs> <laughs> intentions of taking some home, but you don't make it. You leave it at the table? No, I ate it. Oh. <laughs> hey, Leroy. Leroy, did you notice that, what? that G. Bush just kind of ghosted hey. out of there? Hey, he just out. Here, hey you, you have to understand. He dying and down? You, you, make, you make a lot of friends eating with my crew for this reason. Mm. If dinner is at 7, People gonna be trickling in there until ten thirty, <laughs> right? I was and that's the only exactly one there at seven. Yeah. The only one. Yeah. And Bull texted me like a good white friend and was like, "Gee, it's seven o'clock. Where are you at? You got five minutes. Everyone's gonna be here." He's like, "But then again, Leroy isn't here yet, so <laughs> I think you're fine." I was there at seven. Leroy got there like seven oh five or so. Oh, and you were there before Leroy. I beat Leroy there, and then nobody else was there until at least seven twenty or so. Wow, it was just me and right. Leroy for a while. Well. Because keep in mind, Where did y'all Jason, go? Johnny, Jason and his friends, <laughs> and Bernie, Bernie was coming from Youngstown, and Jason was coming from, um, from the the uh, game. Game, yeah. So I tried to time it up, and they told me seven was good, and then soon as we all, and then we trying to get a hold of Metcalf, <laughs> and, and Metcalf. <laughs> 
Come in. Sure, when we on the way out. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what you doing? <laughs> he was like, what you doing? He said, well, this? I already ate. <laughs> he said, what? After this, it's already he was trying to get Leroy to go out. <laughs> and Leroy was not having it. I'm surprised Leroy no, didn't. What? 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 No. <laughs> they don't, like, you know, you have them friends. They, like, they look, they cool. And they cool friends. till three in the morning. And you not. <laughs> Yeah, I know yeah. who I can hang out with and who I can't. <laughs> he was, he was I, I meet, I meet, I meet Metcalf for happy hour. <laughs> if I get caught in his car after happy hour, I may not get home till three in the morning. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. That's Le fact. Leroy, let me take you back to the game. Now that wait, hold on, hold on. Before the game, he's got to tell one more story for this night. Okay. Well, it's not really from this night. But you got, Leroy, you got to tell the story <laughs> about when you were living next to Metcalf and the, the story with the car, you know what I'm talking about? So that's a funny story. So, so Metcalf <laughs> is one of the coolest individuals I know. He, he don't raise his voice. He always chuckle. <laughs> you know, cool, cool. You know, all his threads is look. He was so cool. It was cold as hell. He ain't wearing no socks. He said, I ain't have no socks to match. So he just <laughs> went ankles out, right? He, I don't care. I, I'm yeah. getting, I'm keeping my feet covered. So I was telling them, I said, you still think you cool? I said, all right. So I was telling these guys, Metcalf, we live right next to each other. And every morning, I hear the garage door open. I hear his shower go on. And then I hear the remote start. So he was so cool that he had a system to where he could just go down to his garage, get in his warm and toasty car, and pull out after a shower, right? So I was getting a little bit annoyed about all this planning and stuff like that. So one morning, I heard the garage door open. I heard the shower start. I heard a little rumblings in the, in the bathroom, so I figured I was safe. And I went and crawled in the back of his car. <laughs> it, it took, it, it got in the back seat and ducked down because, you know, cool guy, his window's so tinted, he ain't going to see me when he go by to go to his to the driver's seat. So we back up. We go out of the parking lot. And then I go, ah! And I jump out. <laughs> this guy's a I jump out. I jump. And he, he, was, he said, man, I could have killed us both. But he didn't even scream. He said, I scared him so much, nothing came out. He went, ah! he, nothing. So, that is such a good yeah, I, look, I, I gotta, I gotta test, I gotta test all the things. We, if you cool, I'm gonna see if you cool. Mm. You know, so yeah, we tell that story all the time. And he, he is cool. We laugh about it, but it, oh man, it was crazy. Oh, God. <laughs> all right, Leroy, back, back to this game. Shot. Back to this game. <laughs> now hey, <I> gotta... <clears throat> just take the L. I see you in three. See you in three sixty five. I don't know why you listen. See, like I explain to everybody, I'm gonna explain to you the way I explain to everybody. 362 now. If they, if the Buckeyes win the game, I'm gonna have four pair of gold pants in the national championship ring. If the Buckeyes lose the game, I'm gonna have four pair of gold pants in the national championship. So it doesn't matter to me. Anyways, Ooh. with that being said, see, see, Ryan, see, here we go. Ryan, here we Ryan, go. Ryan, we, you know, just a, like the question this is about Ryan like, Day. But can, can I, you can can I ask you about ass. Ryan Day, please? Do you what is what's your thoughts on the Ryan Day thing? And because it's a it's a bunch of people that that's calling for his job. Do you think that can that's I, can I, I'm gonna tell you this? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this. There there there's a couple of things that need to be evaluated here, right? If you have the talent and you're not producing, then it's coaching. If you don't have the talent and you're coaching them up. Then it's the players. You got to get more players in there. Now, the one thing that I will say about Ryan Day is this. He has to do a better job of understanding what is going on during the course of a game. I say the same thing about Kevin Stefanski. Any coach that you know that is coached in this game, that has had success on either side, will tell you this, you don't stop no matter what because this game is a long way from over. Don't ever get comfortable. 
You can't get comfortable in this game. There's so many. We've watched this game for how many years and seen crazy things happen? Comebacks, you know, just teams that that are dominant, not winning. So you know how this game's going to go. That message needed to be applied to the players. He needed to relay that message to the players because it seemed like they went into the second half thinking we're going to do what we always do. But guess what? This is Michigan week. It's different. It don't matter whether both teams are undefeated or not. It don't matter how much of a lead you have or not. The attitude in which you go and play this game has to be such that you never let up, you never let go of the rope, you never think you're out of it, or you never think that you have it won. And for some reason, they played that second half like, oh, we're just going to do what we always do, dominate in the second half. And Michigan had something to say about it, and they couldn't <laughs> respond. Leroy. They couldn't respond, and it wasn't like they was missing tackles. Edwards went and was damn near untouched two <laughs> yeah. times. Gashed them. They were, they, they right. were running alone Gashed the them. length of the field right. multiple times. Let me ask right. this, because this is what Maurice Claret has been uh, claiming for a couple of weeks. And as soon as the game was over, he sent me a two-word text. Too cute. That's what he was saying in the build-up to the game was, and he wasn't predicting an Ohio State loss, but he said, this game scares me because Ohio State has no nasty to them. And you said something that, and it's true, all the recruiting services will tell you Ryan Day has had the better recruiting class every year for the – the time that he's been there over Michigan. I'm I'm wondering, is it time to ask, is he recruiting the right kind of player? Because they got a lot of cute. They got a lot of thoroughbreds. They got a lot of playmakers. But this game isn't about winning cute. This game is about being a four-wheel drive truck that can get through whatever the terrain is. And Michigan seems like they're the big, bulky truck, and Ohio State is the fast thoroughbred, and the truck keeps winning. Here, here's what I would say. I would say this, is that Ohio State is best suited to win the national championship and play the style of football that can win anywhere in the country. Right. Right? They, 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 they're, they're, it's SEC uh, ball. Uh, a spread, there's a spread offense. They got a lot of speed all over the place. They can score quick. They got a quarterback who's mobile. All those things can win a national championship. But guess why they won't win a national championship? Because you first got to get out of the Big Ten. And the Big Ten is a different animal. And 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 we make fun of the, the, the Pac-12. <clears throat> we make fun of the Big 12. We make fun of all these other conferences that win a certain way. Like there's no defense played in in, in the uh, Big 12. None. <laughs> right? And And sometimes they get a team... That, that makes it through and ends up in, you know, in, in the playoff. Um, but if you don't get out of your conference, you can't win the national championship. And so you have to play a style of football that allows you to do that. Now, for so many years, Ohio State has basically <laughs> been a dominant force in the Big Ten. And they never had to worry about anybody pushing them around, or whatever. They just outrun them. The last couple of years, physical too. Michigan has just gone in and been a Big Ten physical football team and beat Ohio State that way. Hit them in the mouth two years ago. Right. Last year, last year, physicality was definitely a thing. I wouldn't say physicality was a thing this year like that. I think now under two gash plays, that's misfitting. I don't think that's... Physical. I think just two people got into the gap. As far okay. as the big passes go, is that's the, who runs cover zero on first and second down? That's like everybody talking about Ryan Day. Nobody saying anything. You try knows they, that's a but, cop but, out. I would if you pay here, me two no. million dollars. I'm not running cover zero on first and second here, now. But but here's the deal. Here's the deal. Why do you do that? You no, do that so you can make you, no. you do that. Leroy, Whoa, hold on, Leroy. You, you don't do that. The, your corner's been terrible here. all year. No, but you here's cannot what, do that. Here, here. I'm telling you what the game plan was. The game plan was 
Do whatever you can to stop the run and dare McCarthy to beat you. And he did. And he did. And he did. So, like, you got to make some they adjustments. Adjust? They didn't make you any got, adjustments. But you know what they did? Uh, they made some adjustments and I then they watched, got gashed. I watched from this from my house. Um, like you know what? Le- he you completed know, twelve but- passes. Le- Leroy, I, I look at this, and this has always been a thing for me when I watch Ohio State. <laughs> when when you watch Ohio State, I look at their offensive line, right? And one thing that is is inevitable, when you back it up, when when you start being pause, when you back it up, <laughs> and you get in that shotgun, that boy been on the road today. It's different. When Ohio State was really rolling, and they had Cardell Jones, they was running a pistol. And he was getting downhill with Ezekiel Elliott. Facts. He had 200 yards. He, he, they would get in the pistol and get downhill. Now, the thought process is like this is when you start backing the quarterback up and he in shotgun and knows where your runs are coming from and knows where your best, you know, you're throwing out of it. The offensive linemen tend not to come off the ball. And when I look at Ohio State's line, they're massive. I mean, they are massive at the tackles. The guards are huge. And my question is, why is it that they can't move nobody off the ball? Well, that's the, the reality is, it, it's the mindset, it's the mentality. When you a big boy up front, and I know, it. when I see an uh, offensive lineman and he in a two-point stance, I automatically think, you ain't blocking me. I'm, I'm about the same size as you. If a defensive lineman is the same size or, or, or about the same size as the offensive lineman, sure you know what they tell us? You an athlete. You play basketball. You gonna let him t- block you? They you can't block me. Slowest people they, on, the, on the field. They give him a move. We have field, and you just as strong as they is. So for me, there needed to be some games where they was like, you know what? Pass and be damned. We won't, we gonna we gonna run the ball they didn't, every play. They didn't do that. Every one of the games this season: Indiana, Here's, Purdue. Pick one. The MAC team, the MAC Northwest. Pick three or four teams, and you you tell your team, hey, look, hey. We we gonna have to we need this against Michigan. I'm gonna let y'all know we ain't even throwing the ball all game. It, it might be but, close. But here's here's the thing though. Here here's here's the thing you have to understand is that the thing that's killing coaching now in at every level is they feel like they have to be creative and they have to be geniuses and and the old school mentality was we gonna do whatever it takes to win the game we don't care who gets the credit mm-hmm. or the blame right and so you have a lot of these co- it's happening a lot in the nfl where these young coaches come in and take over yeah. and they feel like they have to put their imprint on a team by showing how smart they are reinventing the when game. the fact of the matter is is if you're winning games nobody gives a damn Robert Smith, let's and, bring you in. Robert, I, I, the thing that was most distressing to me was Dallin Hayden looked so good the week before. What happened? Where the hell was I, Dallin Hayden? Two carries? I, Man, Robert, I, Robert, I, Robert, I, I have I, absolutely I, no idea. Look, did anybody ask him that? I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> Leroy, 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 Leroy with that cigar, man. The cigar. I know. And... I know. <laughs> He's not allowed to light it, though. His wife would, would, would not like that. This is a cigar for victors. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, hey, so the victor goes to it's, it's a, he already you, it, hey. you just imagine this lit Robert I, I couldn't I couldn't get over that like the, even I, while the game was going on I kept saying where is Dallin Hayden they were running I have as no their idea lead running what back ha- a guy I have no that idea what happened. I have no idea what happened during during the weekend practice I don't think any of us really do but I was as surprised as you and the only thing that I can think is that Something happened during practice during the course of the week uh, because it made absolutely no no sense to me, especially after the game that he had against Maryland the week before. It made absolutely no sense to me. But you know, I, I think uh, uh, you know, there's a you guys are all right. <laughs> you know, like why are you playing cover zero and Leroy? You're right. Like they wanted to stop the run. They did such a great job of it in the first half. What was it? Ten yards rushing in that first half. Ohio State missed out on uh, a lot of opportunities to score more points in that first half. And then in that second half, I mean, you're talking five plays in the game, 350 yards. Unreal. Five plays. Right. I've never seen that. 350 yards. I mean, that's just Jeez. unbelievable. But you know what? We were asking this all year long about the secondary. Away. And, you know, I, I don't want to beat up on kids and – 
you know, maybe in the in the area. It's not the whole area, segment. It's the quarters specifically. A little bit. <clears throat> but we had been talking about Denzel Burke, and the thing that was concerning about that to me was that with all of those mistakes, he wasn't getting replaced. To me, that means that the depth isn't there. The athletes aren't there. We're so spoiled mm -hmm. at Ohio State with the defensive backs that we've had over the last 10, 15 yeah. years. Those guys were not there. And you can play cover zero when you have some dogs on the back end that you don't have to worry about. But, it, oh, man, it just it, it was ugly. It was ugly. And, and, and they made right, no like, adjustments they, either, Robert. They didn't adjust. Yeah. What do you adjust to? Right. What would you adjust Stop to? Stop running cover zero. You can't do it. You but, don't have the okay, guys on the back and, end to and, do it. And when they did, they got 200 yards ran on them in the second half. 240 yards. Right. What's, they tried. Ro Robert, they they did you, adjust. Robert, where are you on the Ryan? Day like, there are, there are pockets of Buckeye fans that, <laughs> I mean, the guy's won 90% of his games. There are pockets of Buckeye fans that are saying he can't he can't handle this job. Where are you on that? I'll say this. The program seems to be trending in the wrong direction. And I've thought that over the last couple of years. Right. And, you know, whether that's, you know, it's one thing to have stars by your name. It's another thing to bring in players and develop them. And, you know, I was looking at a statistic about, you know, the Michigan players that were three and four stars, <laughs> guys that ended up getting drafted. They're doing a better job finding the diamonds in the rough and developing those guys. Ohio State isn't doing it. And, again, you're spoiled to a degree. There's no question about it. Like, there are only so many of those guys out there, right? So many of those guys that are those five stars that you can bring in. You don't have to develop those guys. And they end up being really good players uh, and, and end up getting, getting drafted very high. They're not doing that on the defensive side of the ball in particular. And I would point to – you know, all three levels, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, who are those? Who are those guys now that, uh, you know, are are the are the types of players that are going to be first and second round draft picks? And that, and if you don't have those guys, then you better be able to develop those guys. And it seems like that hasn't been the case. You know, you know, Robert. The thing I was talking to, you know, some former Buckeyes about is that when you look at Ryan Day's four years as the coach, as the head coach. He's, he's really only got one meaningful win, and that's the one against Clemson. So do you – like, that's why when people say – should he – I don't think he should be fired. I don't because 31-2 and two in the Big Ten play, like – and then who are you going to replace him with? That's the question. Like, who you who's out there that y'all think is going to just – and, and don't tell me Deion Sanders because it, it's well, not going to be Deion. Urban, Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer. Mike, they ran, they Mike, ran Urban Mike out of Vrabel. town. Urban ain't coming back. Mike Vrabel is as Buckeye as Mike they Vrabel. get. Mike why Vrabel. Would why would he leave Tennessee? <laughs> but, Robert, speak to why Mike Vrabel would leave Tennessee for Ohio State. It's just different, man. It is it's different. Just different. And some guys are just drawn. Uh, I mean, and if there is one guy – that would be the perfect fit that I think would jump at the opportunity. It would be Vrabel. But then again, <laughs> you know, I don't know how many of you guys saw, you know, Mike Vrabel said that he would, you know, cut off a piece of his anatomy to win a, a, a Super Bowl. And, you know, he's had some teams that, uh, you know, have come close, uh, you know, in the playoffs. And that may be the one thing that keeps him from the job. But if Mike Vrabel was offered that job, I think he would. I, th I think he would jump all over. I, I agree. Don't think would, wow. And I don't think there's a, the there isn't for the a minors. person. I don't get it. There it's isn't a, a person in the country that would be more ideal for that head job at Ohio State than he's Mike Mr. Buckeye. Mike, he's Mike Mr. Rabel, also, Mike Rabel and Mike Rabel and Luke Fickle came. Their first year at Ohio State was my last year at Ohio State. And I remember, you know, I would go back to Ohio State. It would be me and Joey and Eddie and Vrabel a bunch of guys working out back there at Ohio State. You want to talk about a guy that just knows how to work. And that same work ethic that we could see when we were working out, you know, in, in, in May and June preparing for an NFL season is what's made him the coach that he is in the National Football League and made him, of course, the player that he was in the National Football League. But, you know, we'll, we're, we're going to see what happens here. But – you know, again, I would just say that it seems that the program is trending in the wrong direction. And whether and part of it is 
recruiting, but part of it seems to be development of the players and then the execution of the scheme. Brian, I would say line. this also that the same thing you guys are saying about Ryan Day or the same conversations everybody was having about Jim Harbaugh. Two years yep, ago. You're true. right. You're and, right. And, 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 and to further that, Jim Harbaugh is the Mike Vrabel of Michigan. He is. You're right. And so, and so that patience that the, the, the fans and the, 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 the Buckeye fans and, and the, everybody involved with it would have is going to be at a different level because you know who Mike Vrabel is. And that's the same way they were with Jim Harbaugh. Right. So it, it, you would be, <clears throat> given the same circumstance of the last two years, if Mike Vrabel was the coach, you'd be having a different conversation. And I yep. think that's what happened. At, that's what happened at Michigan. They put all those numbers out there. Of he didn't win against anybody. He can't beat a ranked team. All those things, and nobody ever wavered on Jim Harbaugh. Well, there were people. Yeah, but, the first but Leroy, job, here's Leroy. the difference. Leroy, Coach Harbaugh had done it before. I mean, look what he did right. at Stanford. Look what he right. did with the 49ers. So I, I think got it's you. just different. And, and they were more they were more patient because they understood a reality that we all know. Ohio State had an incredible edge athletically over yes. Michigan at that time. There's right no, I mean there's right. there's no two ways about it. We talked about this last week. That gap has shrunk if it hasn't it has. reversed. It has. And and my question my question would be that is it because of development or just the, the fact that you know the 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 pool that you have uh, access to is smaller, so you you can't miss as much as you were able to before because people were lining up to go to Ohio State. Because Michigan well, has the same comes, problem. It, but the, yeah, and but there's the thing. Then it then it comes down to coaching. I mean, would you say that Co- Michigan has a more talented roster? I mean, you know, no. going into the game, going into the game, and and you're right, Leroy, like. For all the talk about J.J. McCarthy, 12 of 24 in that game. But those those right. big plays counted. So then it comes down to, wait a minute, are you developing the guys and are you utilizing the guys on game day the way that you need to? And is your right. staff making the adjustments that they need to make? And, look, I know Jim Knowles is a great defensive coordinator, but, uh, you know, the, it's it's been said many times, right, like, Okay, you're gonna you're gonna burn me on this once. You know it's the old you know uh, fool me once, shame on shame on you, and fool me twice, shame on me. Right? Like you got to right. adjust. You got to adjust on the fly. Right. And if and, and, and I, if your coaches aren't making those adjustments, and you hired those coaches, then what does it say about you? Ultimately, it always falls on the head man. Isn't this isn't this about coaching arrogance though? Like. I don't have to change because our guys are better and we're just going to turn it around. Because I think when you watch that second half, <clears throat> there's a lot of people on that sideline, including the players, that just assumed they were going to do what they do to everybody else in the second half. And they didn't really make that many adjustments other than they quit running cover zero. I think it starts as arrogance. It turns into ignorance. It's arrogant yes. to think that you had that edge to begin with. It's ignorant to watch it and still think you yeah. do. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. And, but, and, and, know, and... Go ahead. Go ahead, Robert. Well, I was just going to say, but, you know, again, and I know it's been talked about, you know, I think the run game was a big difference. You know, not, not having Travion Henderson in there and Mayan Williams in there, but an offensive line that's already been discussed that just hasn't been as dominant. They haven't run the ball at will and – they weren't able to run the ball when they needed to, and that's something that, you know, reared its head once again. Because you, you talk about converting third downs, a lot of converting third downs is staying on schedule in first and second down. You get four right. yards on, on first down, and you know, a, a couple of few yards on third down. You, you know, you're facing the likelihood of converting third and six plus versus third and six below is just vastly different. And look at the second half, right? Punt, punt, punt. Field goal, interception, interception. 
for Ohio Jeez. State. I mean, it's just, we threw now, two picks. Let me ask both of y'all this question. Well, the one was the underhanded. We've drilled down yeah. on Ohio State. <laughs> that was desperation. Yeah, that was desperation. <laughs> that, one, that's, that was when I seen the Heisman go right out the window. Mm. We, we didn't drill right down there. on Ohio State and Michigan. Heisman but where do, you guys, where do you guys see? <laughs> you um, Where do you guys see ready. them with the SEC? I mean, because here's the thing. Yeah, Michigan won this time. They got smoked last year by Alabama or when the, the time they were in it. Ohio State wins, but they begin smoke too. Where, where do you, as the Big Ten bring in a UCLA, USC? How do you guys close that gap where you can start seeing the Big Ten teams getting two teams in? Because the thing is, they've been trying. They to, might this year. They've been trying to move move these SEC teams around where you they can get two not. teams in, and, and by the time they move it to eight, they'll be trying to move four SEC teams in. How can you guys as a conference move forward where it's not a, a, an elimination game, so to speak, if Ohio State beat Michigan or Michigan beat Ohio oh, State? Oh, easily. They move up the thing here's, to 12 teams. Well, that's coming. Here, here's the, yeah, here's the interesting coming. thing. There's two, there's two things that I, I, I'm excited for. I'm excited to welcome another type of football into the Big Ten. So now to, to win the Big Ten – you're going to have to expand a little bit with how you play against USC and UCLA. Right. Right? Yeah. And and that's going to make you better playing against other teams around the country. The expansion I'm looking forward to because for 100 years we've been playing football at at the comforts of the southern teams. So when you get in these playoffs I want to see Alabama come to the horseshoe or come to the big house mm. in December. I do too. Mm. They're okay. not built that way. So, They're not built that way. Right. I want to see I want to see LSU come up and play in that snow. Clemson. I want to see, you know, all these southern schools that now have to travel around the country and play in some of the conditions that we play in. Because a true national champion means that you could beat anybody anywhere. Well, come come see us. Yeah, that, that, I Come see that. us up here in Guys, December. We, we got to move on. I'm just going to end it by saying this, and I think this is a reality that we all realized last night with the, with the, with the pairing show or the, the, the ranking show. If, you, if USC loses to Utah, which they've already lost to Utah once this year, if they lose to Utah, we're talking about an entirely different situation because now Ryan Day has a chance – to uh, to avenge that loss and to get back in this national championship uh, chase and who knows maybe even meet Michigan in a championship game. Woo! Hey, let's do I'm it. I'm gonna have to get another cigar. I'm gonna have to get another cigar. Nice. And, and Thanks, an ugly guys. sweater. And I'm, I'm gonna wear the matching twice. pants. You don't want hey. us twice. <laughs> hey. hey, 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 Jay, Jay, I completely agree with you. I don't think there's any chance in the world Ohio State goes into a game two with me. If they had a rematch, they would play that game much differently. They would. I, think, I, do, I do think that they would win a rematch. Let's go, baby. Well, Let's all right, go. guys. Here's the Let's deal. Go. We got to go, Here's man. The deal. We USC go. loses. You'll be there. <laughs> and I'm going to be and, – and, Robert, tell me how you feel about this because last year – they did everything they could to separate Georgia and Alabama, right? Yeah. If this year they don't do the same with Michigan, Ohio State, I'm going to be pissed. No, no, Leroy, <laughs> they, they wouldn't be separated in the first round, but if each won their semifinal game, yeah, but, they can't keep wait, them apart for the championship. They, but keep in mind, wait, Jay, last year Michigan was number one or two, and they moved them down so they wouldn't have to – so they could play. Um, so Alabama and uh, and and uh, Georgia, Georgia would have to be play two one SEC another. Teams this year. It's yeah, not but so it, talking it, about. It. it can't right. happen this year. It can't. No, it I know, but I don't want. If it's two Big Ten teams, I want them to separate they them are. so they don't have one to play each two, other in the first four. round. You don't want that Ohio State smoke, is what you're They're saying. Both <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Look, Thanks, guys. Do I look scared? Do I look scared? No, you didn't look scared. Love you guys. What you got for me, Craig? See you next you week. Got, All right, right, guys. Oh, boy, shake Put it. your chain you know away, T. Hey, Thomas, put your chain away. I'm coming get it. Ooh, next game, wow. I'm going to come snatch that chain off the chest. <laughs> That's right.
That's why losing sucks so uh, bad. Let me see. That uh, was my that say? was my grandmama bike. Hey, what is wrong Yo, with you, man? Was so good he gon' he gon' cry when he gets to the car. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, he, like I say, he, he right to say whatever. I can't say nothing nope, to the guy. Gotta take it. You want some of this, old man? Cigar, we'll see no. you guys next week. No. Peace. All right. No. Some Cleveland <laughs> right. whiskey.